I say the word satwa to you, what do you think of? What springs to mind? What memories do you have of this very bustling quarter of Dubai? Let's say hello now and welcome to Omar Rashid. Good afternoon, Omar. How Hi, you? Siobhan. How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> Great to see you. Great nice to, to see hear you. you. Um, a very familiar voice of Dubai Eye, of course. 32 years young, half Welsh, half Pakistani, and also, of course, was here at uh, 103.8 right. as a business news presenter. Now, how long have you lived in the neighbourhood of Satwa? It it really has been 10 years of actually calling Satwa my neighbourhood. When I reach Dubai, I say, you know, I'm back in Dubai. It's still not home. When I'm driving from the airport, uh, I'm going past Karama, another great neighbourhood that I like, but it's still not my home. When I start to approach the Trade Centre, I start saying, I'm getting near home. When I get to Satwa Roundabout and Al Diyatha, I'm nearly home. And then when I drive down Satwa Road, and I get to Plant Street as well, and then turn the corner where, where our house is, that, that is home. Satwa, and, and in a way, not Dubai, is, is my home. And say hello and welcome to Andy McNabb. What are the elements then that uh, make a place uh, seem like a home? Well, uh, I suppose the obvious day-to-day interaction with community members, and uh, it's nice, you know, to be able to walk down the street and to know, to you know, to wave up to the to the barber shop and say good day, shoo me, and he'll sort of stick his head out the door <laughs> and he'll he'll say hello. And... Um, Satwa is, and it's real, you know. Not not every street is spotless, not every street is sparkling. Um, every other corner has got some kind of odour or some kind of smell. Um, but it's real and the people are real as well. I don't actually have a driving licence in, in Dubai. Satwa's got to be down on foot. My mother and I, we actually came to Dubai together. She used to teach about nine years ago, um, but then finally she opened up um, a couple of tailoring shops here in Dubai, a tailoring shop and uh, a wedding dress shop. Is she? Rosie's there, do you want to try them on? Yes. Hi, Rosie. Hello. How are you, Mustana? I'm my booty. (laughs) (laughs) How's everything? Uh, yeah. Do you want to try them on really? or what do you think? Have you got time? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, oh, sorry, cool. Rose. Yeah. Okay. The first time, I think the first time was probably a tuxedo when he was at uh, Dubai College. Yeah. Was that right? Is that right, Irma? Oh, yeah, you're right. I it think it must actually, have been, yeah. yeah. He looked rather uh, rather swish in that one, actually. You're my mum. You're, yeah. you're bound oh, to say yeah. that. Oh, no, he did, actually. No, I don't think so. I can't imagine not being in Satwa because this is so convenient because you have the, you know, the fabric shops and it's just the atmosphere and everything. This is a tailoring sort of atmosphere and, and uh, no, I can't imagine. And also, um, with the new buildings, the prices are going to be so high. Actually, what's so interesting is that we have weddings from all around the world. All these people have obviously been to Satwa. One of the best things to eat in Satwa is definitely, um, definitely the samosas from Najud. These are, these are mammoth samosas. They're huge. We're not talking about the small, triangular, uh, deep fried uh, pieces. These are, these, are, these are boulders of samosas. They're, they're, they're crispy on the outside and they're kind of doughy uh, in the inside and they're filled with potato and peas and carrots and plus, it's also the sauce they serve them with. The special Najud sauce is to die for. Thank you. This could be the best samosa moment ever. Yeah, this is Andy's house. Um, you know, it looks like a pretty nondescript villa. It looks like any other one in, in the street. Maybe it is, but uh, I guess the, the people inside make it kind of special.
Go ahead, looking at 100 down now. That's a month's feed. At the Schwarmer Shack, no question. A month? Yeah, three dirhams. 100 dirhams? Yeah, it's 99 dirhams. Yeah, it's 9 dirhams a day. That's 30, 30 it's three dirhams right, 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 dinner. Yeah, yeah. Have you tried it? Once or twice. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a comfortable place. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I remember one, one time, like the girl just moved over here, and uh, and she was looking at a place in the marina, and um, and so and, and I thought she knew where she was going, but she didn't. So he rang up the landlord who was taking her to this place, and he goes, "Oh yes, yeah, Somerset Tower or something." And he's like, "Oh," and we say, "Oh, give us directions to get there." And he couldn't give us directions, and he said, "Oh, well, just 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 you know, go into the marina and then find someone on the street and ask them, and they'll tell you." We drove around the marina for about 15 minutes. There's no there's no footpaths, yeah, so of course yeah. there's no people walking on the street. And it's just, yeah, I was just like, man, at least in Satwell, like, you could just pull up on the side of the well, road, the thing wave is, some dude over. If everyone like, knows the landmarks, you'd be given Lyle Supermarket yeah, yeah, or the Iranian yeah, hospital yeah, yeah, or, yeah, yeah, or yeah. family clinic, and you just yeah. stop and say family clinic and someone knows. Yeah. I mean, you don't need to sort of talk to a tourist on the street. And, all right. We're, um, that was, uh, I think, this whole setup talks about Satwell. Um, in, in a nutshell, I think we've got an iPod with our beats and we've got a, um, obviously a, a, a very an antique radio, radio. <laughs> to play the beats through. I think it's a, the dichotomy of Satwa, the old and the new. So, uh, sorry. I'm not talking about Philly, Compton, or the Bronx. I'm talking about Sour, that's where I'm from. It's the baddest in this neighborhood, this planet, um. And the Sour 87 chillin' all night long. It don't matter if you're black, brown, white, or Pakistani. You can hang at Niles even if you got no money. I go to Classic City and buy a suit of this cash. Cause my low riding Jags always eating up my cash. I'm from Sour. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. And I'm from Sour. That's my uh-huh. Sour. That's my uh-huh. everything. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's my sour. That's my sour. That's my everything. I think I've been here for so long, and I've grown. I've grown up here. I've spent the last, the last twenty years on and off here in this area, in Satwa. And now that, it, now that it is set to go, I think, it's, I think it's time for me to move on as well. Any challenge to people who haven't been to Satwa, if you haven't eaten out on a Friday evening uh, outside at Ravi's restaurant, do it. If you haven't walked along Satwa Road and popped into Najud's famous Pakistani sweet shop and tried their best samosas in the whole of Dubai, do it. If you haven't gone mad shopping uh, on, on, on a Friday morning in Lal's or you haven't, you know, lounged around on the steps outside and just watched some, some of life go by in Satwa, do it. Do it before it's too late and you don't have the chance to. Omar Rashid, thank you very much for sharing as well this afternoon. Keep those memories alive. Some wonderful words uh, from uh, Andy and Omar. Head down there. If you've not got anything else to do this afternoon, take a walk, take a trip, enjoy the sights, the sounds, the smells of Satwa. Keep those uh, memories alive. If I for some reason lost my key and it was impossible for me to get into the uh, into my house for three days and I had to go and live in Satwa, I would, but I would get a very short lease seeing as it's going to get knocked down in the next few months. Uh, if it wasn't going to get knocked down in the next few months, I would, if my circumstances were different, you know, for, for me Satwa is just not my lifestyle. It's not. It's not the way I'd like to live. It's not near my office. It's not where my friends are. Satwa, I'm sure, is a nice is a nice place. You can find nice nice apartments. But unfortunately, uh, the government of Dubai don't think so. Hence the reason they're going to knock it all down and build something. Hopefully, that can look like this. Uh, I've lived here now around five years. In Dubai Marina, I've lived here for three, three and a half years. What we're looking at is we're in JBR, Jumeirah Beach Residence, which is a huge part of Dubai Marina. 
takes up probably uh, approximately 20-30% of the whole marina. It's the only uh, beachside residence, so you, you have your private beach. Uh, we're looking at basically the canal for the whole marina. All this is man-made. Um, it was made by Imar uh, around five, six years ago. And you're looking at all the different developments and buildings within Dubai Marina. You can see where I live in the far distance with the crown on, on the top. But this is Dubai Marina. That's the bachelor's fridge, by the way. Actually, it's quite, it's quite full up today. I went shopping last night for a few hours in, in, the, in the supermarket, so it's full for me. <laughs> I came to, to, uh, to Dubai five years ago with probably five, six hundred pounds in my pocket. I, I, I slept with a friend for a while in, in, in that apartment. I, I rented a very cheap apartment in, uh, in Discovery Gardens. I worked my way up. It took me a long time and a lot of hours of work. But um, like anything, you put the time and the effort in and you can see your goals. I've sold around 150 to 200 marina properties since I've started. I'm known one time as the king of the marina, believe it or not. That's, that was my nickname years ago when I was doing rentals for the other companies. And I, I kind of controlled like the phase one and Alamajara and all the new Imar developments back in, back in the day. And basically I could get my hands on anything in Dubai Marina. At the time there weren't many marina apartments available. There were only a few buildings. I used to do a lot of networking, even with the security guards. I uh, give them my business card, go put my sign in spinners. So, to cut a long story short, I had a very, very large database of marina apartments. So, you wanted an apartment in the marina, you know who to call. You would call me. I specialize in Dubai Marina. Uh, not only do I live here, but I, I have a huge knowledge of everything that's going on here. Uh, for a living, I own my own and manage my own real estate company. I started this business around a year ago. The name is EG Properties. Yeah, we're here in my office. Typical day, I get here around nine o'clock. We have this, we have now around nine, nine, ten staff. Basically, this is this is uh, this is where it all happens for me. This is uh, what, what took me for three or four years to build this thing uh, in, the, in the marina. Um, do we have any free bedrooms there? I think we do actually. I have one investor who gave me a few of these. Uh, I know exactly what they want, and I think we have this. So I'll search through my database now, and if we have it, I'll pass the information to James or one of the sales guys, and they'll call him and organise viewings. Nice to meet you, Mark. Master bedroom upstairs, master bathroom with a sauna and jacuzzi upstairs. Yeah. Everything's really state of the art, it's really modern. What do you think? Oh, beautiful. Um, most of the time in the marina, I find myself driving. I can tell you a story about my father when he came to visit me. He's new, he didn't know Dubai, and unfortunately in the marina, it was about a year and a half ago, there weren't that many pedestrian uh, crossings or walkways or pathways, so my dad loves to walk. It was a nightmare, there was construction everywhere, and he just couldn't find his way to the beach. What should take 10 minutes took him two hours with GPS. The marina would differ quite a lot from a day in Manchester. First of all, the, the, the thing that sets everybody off is the weather, of course. In Manchester, 90% of the time it's raining. When you wake up here, especially in the marina with the sea, you wake up to the sun and it's beautiful uh, and it's really clean air around here for some reason. But you have a lot more to do here because the weather is so nice. My favorite pastime with my girlfriend, Sarah, uh, would be Probably to go to the beach, or go on the boat and go out for the day, uh, whether it's wakeboarding, or water skiing, or just relaxing on a boat. We're all here to work, uh, so most of us are busy most of the time, but we try and make some time at the weekend. We'll go to the beach, or go, uh, go, go clubbing in the weekend, or go for a nice meal somewhere. So we try and give time for some like social time. Uh, I've not had a holiday since, actually since I got here, which is five years. I've been to the UK uh, like twice, uh, just, but that's not really a holiday for me. It's, going to, it's great to see the family and friends down there, but as soon as you get off the plane in, in Manchester, uh, you know exactly why, you, why I live in Dubai. 
The social scene in this neighborhood is amazing. There's always someone in the building throwing a party. If there's no parties happening, you can go to all the bars and the restaurants. personalized stalls. They sell like homemade uh, and handmade uh, gifts and things like this. It's, it's a really nice atmosphere. The kids will come out onto the market and play in the fountains. It's a really, really nice day out. Marina is a place for all different types of people to live. It has the beach, the restaurants, the, 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 the cheaper apartments and the most expensive apartments. I love Dubai, I love Dubai Marina. Um, I think I made a really good choice for my lifestyle to live in the marina. I like going to the beach at the, at the weekend. I like to dine in all the restaurants here. Uh, my work is five minutes drive away from here, so I have, uh, it's a very good, perfect place for me to live.